All right. Now, Proverbs chapter 8, of course, great chapter. This is all about wisdom and kind of referring to wisdom as like a person, right? This is the way it's written. You could see, you know, before the foundations of the earth, I was there. And this whole thing is talking about wisdom. And what I'm going to preach this morning is, is a piece of wisdom. And, and I hope that you receive it. Um, I think it should be pretty obvious, but um, I just want to point out a few, a few parts of this chapter where it says in um, verse number 13, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way in the forward mouth do I hate. You know, we need to have an attitude where we hate things that are evil that are not good, that are contrary to sound doctrine, that are contrary to the Bible. And we shouldn't just be okay with that. And then the last verse here, verse 36, the Bible says, it, well, verse 35, it says, For whoso findeth me findeth life. If you have wisdom, you have life. And it says, And shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. So what this is saying is that all those that hate, the people that hate wisdom, that don't want to know, that don't want to know the wisdom from God's word, it says they love death. Now, we're in a time of year where there's a holiday coming up that basically exalts death and it, and it promotes death. I mean, it's, it's a very dark holiday. Of course, I'm talking about Halloween. And that's what I'm going to be preaching about this morning. And it's kind of amazing to me that we live in a day where this even needs to be preached in church that, that Halloween, and I'm going to teach you that you know, Halloween is wicked, it's wrong, and I'm going to explain why we have nothing to do with Halloween as Christians. No Christian should have any participation in Halloween. And you know, I, I, all I ask is that you know, if, if you've never heard this before, if this is something that, that sounds kind of weird to you, just, just hear me out, hear out the points I'm going to make from the Bible. Decide if what you believe is going to come based off of God's Word or if it's just going to come off of what our culture is going to teach you and what our culture tells you is okay. Because it's funny, you know, Sebastian and I were just talking about this the other day. We were driving down the road and, you know, you see these, you see these um, decorations out at people's houses of dead bodies or bodies without a head and you know ghouls and goblins and ghosts and like all of these things that are just you know scary things that are basically just really bizarre and weird now you might say well that's not very weird halloween's coming up okay just just bear with me and, and go through this exercise with me imagine that you are visiting another country somewhere you've never been before and completely different culture and you come from a place where there was no Halloween. You've never seen this before. And you were to go to that place and, you know, just think, I mean, maybe China or Japan or whatever, you know, some other place where it's just completely different culture, right? a, whole, a whole different people. They live differently than we live. And you go out to visit there and you've never been exposed to Halloween in your life. It just, it's just, it's never been there. And you start walking around and all of a sudden you just see all of these dead people, tombstones, death, and dark things just, just in, all, in a whole bunch of people's yards. And that's how they're decorating their house. And this is the type of stuff that they're putting on display on their house. I mean, what, uh, it's, think about it rationally. Like, what, do you, what would you think about that? Be like, man, that's weird. Why are these people doing this? We want to be careful that we don't just accept things because it's the way things have always been, or it's just the way that you were brought up, or it's just the way that, that society says is okay. You know, and that's what we have today with Halloween. It's, it's a, it's, it's a you know, holiday where people celebrate and it's just acceptable and it's normal because it's just been going on for so many years that, it's, that all of a sudden now it's just okay. But if you were to just think, I mean, what if, some, what if you knew someone, what if your neighbor decorated their house all like that in the middle of June and just had all of this, you know, skulls and skeletons and tombstones and ghosts and that was just out. Wouldn't you think that they're a little bit weird? I mean, wouldn't you think like, man, what's that, what's that, what's that person's deal? Why are they obsessed with all this stuff that's dark and death and, and scary? You know, like it, it's, it's weird. And I'm telling you today that it's just as weird 
to do the same exact thing on October 31st as it is any other day of the year. There is nothing normal about this. And actually, that's why I point out this last verse in Proverbs 8. It says, all they that love, hate me love death. And there are people today, look, I'm not saying if you celebrate Halloween that you just love death. Okay, I'm not saying that. But Halloween is a holiday that exalts and promotes things that are scary and death and dead people and dead bones and everything else. And we're going to get into a lot of points this morning. This is just the first one. Um, because I'm trying to teach you some wisdom this morning. And don't turn from this wisdom that the Bible has for us. Now, there are a group of people that, that, that are really fascinated with things that are, that are dead and death. And you see it in the music. There's people, you know, like, like Rob Zombie and Marilyn Manson. And then you see it with um, the culture of people that are like, what's it, what's it called? The, um, the, gothic, the gothic people. Right, people who always dress in black, and you know they they dye their hair black, and they wear like white makeup, and they try to make themselves almost look like ghosts, and it's real just gothic and dark, and they like hanging out at the graves and all this other stuff, and you know this is very similar to what Halloween is all about, and the Bible gives us turn if you would to Mark chapter five, this fascination with death and and um, you know tombstones, gravestones, all this stuff is very common among people who are possessed. This is attributes that we see, and we see this from the Bible. Okay, I'm not just saying, you know, based on experience or anything like that. But, I mean, it is truth. Um, it is reality, and, and it is, you could see this if you've known anyone that's like this. But um, Mark chapter 5, verse number 1, we see a story here of a guy that was possessed with the devil. Mark 5, verse 1 says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And it's talking about Jesus. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Having an unclean spirit means he was possessed. Who had his dwelling among the tombs. So he said he lived in the graveyard. He lived among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because it, he had often bound... He had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. So, you get the picture here. I mean, this is a guy, he lives among the graves. He lives among the tombs. He's possessed with the devil. No one could bind him. He's unruly. You know, he's got this, this, this inhuman strength to be able to just break these chains apart. He lives among the tombs, and um, it says that he's always just crying out and wailing and cutting himself. Very wicked. I mean, this is, this is, this is what a possessed man does. This is what a possessed man looks like. Now, when I think of going up to people's houses, oftentimes you'll hear, what do you hear? Like, I've heard in times past, you know, um, people playing a soundtrack of all this wailing and screaming and just, you know, like this looping of over and over of these screams. Ah! And this is, this is what Halloween's all about. It's about scaring people, right? It's about putting up scary things. And the Bible says, turn if you would to 2 Timothy chapter 1. A very common theme of Halloween is fear. Is meant to keep us afraid. That's why they have these haunted houses, right? You go through a haunted house so that you could get scared and, you know, people come at you with, with axes and chainsaws and, you know, all these things happen to scare you. Um, they, they often will play on TV, you know, all the scary movies that have been made. And, you know, people put up scary decorations and maybe they'll try to scare you when you come to the door. People, someone will be hiding. And, and a huge theme of Halloween is fear. But if you're in 2 Timothy chapter 1 in the New Testament, I want you to see this in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7. 2 Timothy 1 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Any fear that we have, we're, we're taught all throughout the Bible. And there's an entire sermon. I don't know if I've, if I've preached it already here or not, but it, you could definitely preach an entire sermon on, on the subject of fear and how 
it's not godly, it's not of God for us to be fearful. God has not given us the spirit of fear. If we're going to be walking in the spirit of God, we are not going to be afraid. We're not going to be afraid of anything. We're admonished over and over again. The Bible says, fear not what man should do unto you. The only fear that we ought to have is a fear of God. That is the only fear that is a righteous fear, that's a godly fear that God has actually given to us is a fear of Him. As His children, we ought to have a healthy respect and fear of God. And which is one of the reasons why I'm even preaching this sermon this morning because a lot of people, like I said, it's so accepted to just participate in Halloween. But I'll tell you, Halloween is an ungodly holiday. It's a sin, I believe, to, to participate in it. And it's not something we should do. We should fear God more than anything and, and just li listen and obey what He has for us to do. Now, God has not given us a spirit of fear, yet Halloween is all about scaring people. And it's all about putting people in fear. Just because God hasn't given us a spirit of fear doesn't mean that we aren't fearful sometimes. Obviously, we, you know, things happen in our life that can make us afraid. You, know, you, have, you have issues that come up that can make us fearful, but it's not from God. So if God is not giving us that spirit of fear, should we be instilling that spirit in other people? Should we be going out trying to make other people afraid? Now look, I know sometimes it may happen to us, and that's a lapse of our own faith. We shouldn't be fearful. We should just trust in God and trust that God's able to protect us. He's able to take care of us. We're going to walk in the Spirit. We're going to walk in the ways that He's laid out for us, and we have nothing to be afraid of. But every once in a while, sometimes that fear creeps in, but it's not from God. And since fear, that spirit of fear is not from God, we ought not to be putting other people in that spirit of fear either, and, and, and trying to get them afraid because it's not of God. It's not a righteous thing to do. We don't want people to, to, to be afraid in their life. The only fear that we should be giving people is the fear of God. That is the only thing. That's a righteous fear that we should have. Now I'm going to get into some of the common costumes because Halloween, you know, I'm not going to get into the history because honestly, I don't really care about the history of Halloween, you know, there's pagan roots and there's all this other stuff, but none of that matters. What matters is what's going on today and what is Halloween all about today. And today, Halloween um, is all about dressing up in costumes. Like I already said, it's promoting death, you know, scaring people, the haunted house. But let's get into some of the costumes that, that, that go along with Halloween. And I know, I, I'm sure this hasn't changed, but I know when I was a kid, you know, especially with adults, there, you know, people go to Halloween parties and there's always the guys that want to be funny, right? And they think it's going to be so funny if they dress up as a woman. And you see, look, this happened, this happened when I went to school and, and I'm ashamed to admit it, but I participated in that as well. So, so my friends, we thought it would be a big joke, it'd be real funny. Yeah, let's dress up as girls to, as Halloween. Well, the Bible says in Deut turn on Deuteronomy 22.5 because God is very serious about that. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. It's the fifth book of the Bible in the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The Bible says, The man shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So how does God feel about cross-dressing? He says, it's an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Does this say, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment unless it's October 31st? On this day, on this special day of the year, God's okay with you dressing up as a woman, man, or woman as you dressing up like a man. On this day, because you're doing it in fun, all of a sudden it's okay. No, it's not okay. You know what it is? It's confusion is what it is. You're, you're going against God's law. He gives no um, passes on this. Because think about it. Is there any pass in God's laws for any other reason? I mean, if he says, thou shalt not kill, oh, except, um, you know, on this day of the year, it's okay. Or, I mean, think of it. it it's, okay, it's not okay to commit adultery. Oh, but if you're an actor and you're playing out a scene, now all of a sudden adultery is okay. Is that, is that how God's law works? Absolutely not. God is a just judge. He says, look, man, don't put on a woman's garment. Woman, don't put on man's clothing. Just don't do it. It's confusion. God, God made male and female different. 
We're supposed to be different. We have different roles, different functions. He doesn't want us blending the genders and just saying, oh yeah, everything's okay. God wants a difference. That's why God, the, the, the physiology between a man and a woman are different. That's why God tells us it's a shame for a man to have long hair. He wants a difference between us. He wants us to wear different clothing. So I don't care if you say, oh, it's just a joke. Oh, lighten up. It's just for fun. Yeah, try telling that to God, okay? Have fun with that between you and God. Say, it's okay for me, God, to dress up in woman's clothing because it's October 31st. Because it's some man-made, just, just imagination of someone's wicked heart to, to do these types of things, to exalt death, to scare people, and to put on these weird, bizarre costumes. Now, I also want to mention that I don't think it's wrong to just get dressed up in costumes you know, in general, our kids have costumes. They have a, like an owl costume or a dog costume or these other things to put on. I'm not saying that that specifically is wrong, but there are tons of costumes out and on Halloween specifically that are wicked and that are bad and that are wrong. You're in Deuteronomy 22, flip over to Deuteronomy 18 because we're going to see, and these are real common, these are popular. I'm not just picking out like, like one random thing. Oh, like I've never even seen anyone dressed like that before. No, this is common. And this is the environment that you're in when you go out with everyone else and all these, and all these kids and people are out doing this stuff or adults going out to these costume parties. Look, it's wickedness. Deuteronomy 18, let's start reading in verse number nine. The Bible says, when thou art... Come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, look at this, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. So it lists off a bunch of people here and a bunch of things that the heathen of the land were doing before the children of Israel were brought into that land. And he says, Look, because of these things, because of these abominations, abominations are things that God completely hates. God hates these things. It, 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 it's something that, that he's very, very serious about. He's actually so serious about that you don't have to turn there, but in Leviticus 20, 27, the Bible says, A man also or a woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. God dealt so seriously with witches and with wizards and with necromancers and people who dealt with familiar spirits, these mediums and these psychics and all these things. God feels so strongly about that, that one, he drove out the people of the land. And those people, before Israel came into the land, he says this wasn't just like a normal war for them. Normally in war, the men will go out to battle and if they take prisoners, they treat them well, you know, and, and that's how warfare is dealt with. Well, it wasn't that case when the, when the children of Israel inherited this land with the heathen here because they were so wicked. God just said, you need to wipe them all out. Wipe them out completely. The, the men, the women, the children, everybody. This is what God's judgment was upon those nations because they had gotten so wicked. They had gotten to the point where God's judgment was just coming down on them really hard because they did all of these things among a bunch of other things. And I'll tell you what, friends, this is the way that our society is, is headed to today. And is already, I mean, you start checking off the list and saying, yep, that's okay in our culture. Yep, that's okay in our culture. Yep, that's okay in our culture. Yep, wizards are fine. Yep, witches are fine. I mean, a witch is probably one of the most common costumes that girls typically go out and wear on Halloween. It's a witch, right? The black hat, the black dress, a broom, whatever. That is like symbolic of Halloween. And what does the Bible say about witches? That they should be put to death. That it's an abomination. This is how God feels about this. So if God feels this strongly about it, if people, if, an enti if entire nations had everybody wiped out because of these things, and God puts a death penalty on these things, do you think he's going to be pleased with us impersonating these people and, and putting on a costume and saying, look, I'm a wizard. Look, I'm a witch. Look, I'm, I'm cross-dressed as a woman. 
Do you think that's going to be pleasing in God's sight? Do you think he's going to say, oh, well, you know, I have these commandments in the Bible, but because it's Halloween, it's okay. It's not the way God works. And look, I'm just trying to give you a warning this morning. Now, you might still be thinking, you know, well, I still want to participate in Halloween, but I'm not going to dress up as anything bad. I'm just going to go dressed up as, as something that's, that's not a big deal. You know, like I mentioned earlier, my kids have these costumes and, and um, you know, there's nothing inherently wrong with them, which, which there isn't, and I believe that. But when you go out and participate, look, I just want to go out and get some free candy, and I'm not going to dress up as these other things that God hates. Turn, if you would, to um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter number five. It's kind of in the middle of the New Testament. First Thessalonians chapter number five. There's one verse I want to point out here. Because remember, wisdom said to that we should hate evil. I mean, we should have nothing to do with evil. I've already pointed out a bunch of things that are evil and wicked about Halloween. That's not something we should just embrace and say, oh yeah, I'm okay with this. It's actually something that we should hate and be like, man, I can't believe people are doing this. This shouldn't be, this shouldn't be done. I mean, this should not be celebrated. This is not something that should be exalted. I know for one, I don't want my kids looking at all this stuff and, say, you know, and, and explaining, yeah, well, these people are just really weird that they're, they're putting up death and they're exalting death. And, and, and explain these things that it's bizarre and it's not normal to be doing these things. Because kids don't understand this. We need to stand for the truth and what's right. First Thessalonians chapter 5, look at verse number 22. The Bible says, and this verse stands alone. It's in a whole list of, of things that we're supposed to do. You know, it says, quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. Verse 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. He's not just saying abstain from evil. He's saying abstain from all appearance of evil. Appearance of evil could mean that you're not necessarily doing something specifically in and of itself is just, is just completely wrong. But if it appears that you're, that you're doing something evil, if you appear you're doing something wrong, he says to abstain from that. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Here's a good example of what that might be. Um, for example, you have a... a a young man and a young woman who are dating, right? That are that that are, you know, getting to know each other a little bit, and um, one of them spends the night at the other one's house, and nothing happens, right? They don't have a physical relationship, but you know, what the the guy shows up at the girl's house or whatever, and then in the morning, he's seen leaving her house. That is the appearance of evil. Because what that is, is, I mean, what are people going to think? If you see someone going over to a girl's house and then they leave in the morning, you know, people are just going to think and assume that something happened there. Even if nothing did, that is the appearance of evil. And that is something that's going to damage your testimony as a Christian, that you shouldn't be participating in those types of things, even if you didn't, you know, break one of God's commandments, because there's no commandment that says you can't, you know, lay your head down and, and sleep in someone else's house or whatever, you know. Like, but it is the appearance of evil. It's something that's going to give you a bad reputation. It's gonna, it's, it, people are going to see that. And, you know, right or wrong, I don't think it's necessarily wrong to, to, to assume something like that because that's a normal thing that would happen. Um, we need to be wise and be aware of these things. So the Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. I believe we shouldn't be participating in events that are evil. And, and Halloween is an evil event. And I don't think we should have anything to do with it. We should make a stand, draw the line in the sand and say, you know what, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to raise my children this way. And I'm not going to say that this is acceptable and this is right, regardless of, of if American Western culture, you know, that great beacon of truth and, and wholesomeness as it is these days, teaches us that it's okay. Uh, turn, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to see another example of something very similar. This abstaining from the all appearance of evil, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It's not a very long sermon this morning. It's, a very, it's, it's, it's pretty short. It's pretty simple. But um, 
the concept is, is easy to grasp as well. And we're going to see these just a few truths from the Bible. Um, First Corinthians chapter 10. And look at verse number, we're going to start reading in verse number 11. The Bible says, Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Um, I'm not going to get into everything we were talking about earlier in the verse, but it's, you know, it's talking about, well, let's, let's do it. Let's just read a little bit further. It's not that we've, we've, got, we've got plenty of time. Um, it's talking about how Moses... Let's just let's start reading verse number one. We, we've got a little bit of time. First Corinthians 10, verse number one. We'll get this whole thing in context. Moreover, brethren, I would not have you, sh you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. This is talking about the children of Israel after they came out of Egypt and they were in the wilderness. And um, if you remember some of the things that happened, the plagues that came through because they were sinning against God, you know, and a lot of people died in the wilderness because they, they were stiff-necked and they didn't listen to God. Verse 6 says, Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So all these things are examples, they're examples for us to be able to look at and say like, yeah, we don't want to do that because this happened to them and they died and God hated it. We need to be looking at the similar things when we're judging whether or not we should participate in an event like Halloween. And that's why I'm bringing up the things like the costumes and, and, and um, you know, the people who are possessed and the tombstones and, and, and all this other stuff and the, and the fear because they're all examples of what Halloween's about, and we see the examples in the Bible of how God feels about those things. Let's keep reading here. Verse number 12 says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. It's a very great verse for people in general that think they can handle doing certain things and that it's not going to affect them and that they're not going to be tempted. They're not going to be you know, drawn away from God. I'm strong enough. This isn't going to bother me. You think you stand, take heed lest you fall. Verse 13 says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. Now, now we're going to start getting into idolatry. and Idolatry in the, in the Bible... Um, obviously, there, there are people who set up false gods. They would, they would carve a stone or a piece of wood you know, into a shape of a face or an animal or whatever it may be, whatever their false god was. They would usually engrave it with gold or with silver, and they'd put it up, and they'd bow down, and they'd worship it, and they'd pray to it, and that was their idol. That was their false god. And what they would also do with these false gods is they'd burn sacrifices unto it. So if you remember, like in the Old Testament, Christians, you know, people who believed on the Lord, they would offer a sacrifice unto God. And that was normal. They would offer up a bull or a goat or a sheep, and they would offer up these sacrifices, you know, for their sins or for other reasons. They, they'd give these sacrifices, and then they would partake of those sacrifices and they'd eat them. Well, these false religions, these false idols, these false gods, they operated very similarly to the true religion and to the true God. Just like today, there's so many religions, but they're all real similar one to another. They, they kind of use the same you know, types of worship. So the difference is here is that they set up an image, an idol, that that's their God. 
but they would still offer sacrifices and they would eat these sacrifices that were offered unto idols. And this is what we're dealing with here, just to, just to be clear on that. Verse number 17 says, um, no, verse, uh, I forgot where we were. Let's look at verse 14. It says, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar. What say I then, that the idol is anything? Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. What he's explaining here, basically he's saying, that, look, we know that that food is, and he explains this in another chapter as well, the food itself, there's nothing wrong with the food. So like when someone offers up a sacrifice to an idol, the food doesn't change. The food is just food. It is what it is. And he's saying, we know that. We have that knowledge. We know that that idol is nothing. We know that if somebody you know, were to say, Yo, this cup is my God, and they were to fall down and worship it, you know, I'm, I'd be like, this is stupid. This is a piece of plastic. It's just a cup. You know, there's, there's nothing. It, and, and, you know, but if they were to do that, that's a sin. Because you're, you're, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm just using this as a stupid example because it's just as stupid as carving a piece of wood and engraving in gold and making it look all pretty and fancy. It's still just an inanimate ob object that can't do anything. But this is what people would do. And they still do to this day. They set up these, these idols and these false gods. But if someone were to do that, you could say as a Christian, be like, look, this is just a cup and that's just food. So why can't I eat that food if they're going to give me some of that food? This is the point he's making is that, look, we know that's not a god. We know that what they're doing is a sin because they're not worshiping the true God. But look, if they're going to give me some food, I don't care if they're dedicating this thing. It's just an object. It doesn't mean anything. So I'm going to eat it. And what he's saying is, look, no. Because when you do that, you're becoming partakers with them and you're being partakers of, of things that are sacrificed to devils. Because even though this is nothing, all these false gods and false idols are really representative of devils. The representative of things that are not of God, that, that are of the devil. And the devil is constantly wanting people to worship him. That's what he wanted Jesus Christ to do. That's how he tempted Jesus was he wanted Jesus to worship him. He said, I'll give you the whole world. I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world if you just bow down and worship me. That's what the devil wants because he wants to be like God. That's the devil's goal. He wants to be God. He wants to be just like God. God has people worshiping him. That's what Satan wants too. And so he's explaining here that even though these things, if it's just food and we know that the, that the idol is nothing, it's still a sin to eat the food that's sacrificed unto idols because you're a partaker of it. And that's why he says in verse 23, he says, look, all things are lawful for me. We're, first of all, we're free from the curse of the law. We know that we're saved. He says, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. So the things that you're doing, you could say, well, look, this is lawful. I'm not sinning. I'm not doing anything, you know, wrong because I haven't broken one of God's commandments. It's lawful for me to do this. But is it edifying to others? Is it helping other people? Is it, is it expedient? Is it really good for you to do that? Um, you know, when, when you go out and... and um, Participate in these events, you're showing other people, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this, with Halloween, it's just fine. Because you're participating and being a part of it. You're being a partaker with that event. And what that do, what that the message that sends to everyone else is just to say, yeah, that's just fine. There's nothing wrong with this holiday at all. Even if you disagree with all these all these points I made, if you say, you know what? Yeah, that's wrong. I don't like that about Halloween. I don't think it should be all about fear. I don't think that people should be dressed up in these costumes that God hated. And I and I'm against all that stuff. 
But I'm still going to do it because I'm not going to be doing any of those particular things that are wrong. But I'll tell you what, man, if you go out and do that stuff, you're just you're basically putting your stamp of approval on Halloween as Ali and that, that all that stuff is okay. Because if anyone that sees you out and participating and being a part of that, you're being a part of this the, the whole crowd, of the whole group. You can't just, just pick pieces out of it. Let's keep reading here. Look at verse 27. We'll jump down to verse 27. The Bible says, If any of them that believe, excuse me, if any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you eat, asking no question for conscience sake. So you're saying, look, if you get invited to a party, if you get invited to a feast, they give you food, go ahead and eat that food. You don't have to ask questions. Where did this come from? Is this a kosher meal? All this other said, Don't worry about it. Just eat what they give you. But, look at verse 28, it says, But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it, and for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Now look at this last verse because this ties it all together. Where, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Everything that we do, according to this verse, whether we're eating, whether we're drinking, whatever it should be done, it should be done to the glory of God. Now, I know we fall short of this. We are not perfect. If we were perfect, everything that we did would be to the glory of God. But I'm telling you, do you really think it's glorifying to God to participate in, a, in an event, in a, on a day, in a holiday that exalts death, where you do have a lot of people out there dressing up in abominable costumes, in things that God hates, and, and promoting fear and promoting death? Do you think that really is going to bring glory to God? When you go out and knock on someone's door two days after Halloween, and you're trying to give the gospel and you say, hey, wait, didn't I just see you on Friday out here? What do you believe about that? Well, actually, I believe that all this stuff is wrong. But see, I wasn't doing those things. I was. Yeah, that's that's going to be a real strong testimony for you. We want we want to live as upright as possible. Straight down the line. And, you know, what would be your reason? You know, people want to cling on to this and say, well, no, I still want to do this. You know, maybe you made plans. Maybe you, 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 done, you know, we're, we're going to this party already. I already told people we would go. Or we already bought this costume. You know, I, I tried to do, I should have done this last week. I meant to do this early enough so that, you know, you can hear the truth. If you don't, if you didn't know it before, um, think about it and, and don't, don't allow a lame excuse to, to just do something that's, that's sinful. I mean, hopefully I was able to prove to you that it's not a good holiday. It is, it's wicked. And Christians should have no part of it. And most of the excuses that people will use is just, I mean, what's the reason why you want to do it? They say, well, because it's fun. Right? I mean, it's, why, why do you want to go out and do it? Well, because it's fun. Because I get free candy. Or because that's just the way that we've done it. I did it as a kid, and this is just this is the way things have been. Are those really good reasons? I mean, I think about the reason of, well, because it's fun. Well, you know what? I've done a lot of things in my life because they were fun. Ask anyone who goes out and gets drunk or does drugs or fornicates. Why are they doing it? Because it's fun? Oh, so it's because it's fun. That means we should, it's okay. We should just do it then, right? No. If God says not to do something, you don't do it. Look, just because some things are fun doesn't mean you should be a partaker and a participant if it's evil. We should hate the evil. We should love the good. Everything that we do should bring honor and glory unto God. And we should be above reproach. And um, I'm not saying to be rude to people. I'm not trying to be rude to you today if this is, you know, especially if you've ever heard this before or if, um, you know, you're planning on doing stuff and you've participated in the past. Look, I've participated in Halloween quite a bit in my days, but it's wrong, and it's wicked, and it's not something that we should be doing. And um, 
I said, hopefully you, you, you can see that from the Bible, that these things are not the way, have nothing to do with the way that God wants us to live our life. And um, just going out to have a good time, look, there's plenty of ways we have a good time. And that's actually why we are having that event on October 31st, on that Friday, we're having a, that potluck here, is to offer you something else to do. It gives, you, it gives you a place to go where you can be amongst God's people. We can still all have a good time together. Now, oh, I mean, we're not dressing up at all because we're not even trying to be associated with Halloween whatsoever. Okay, this is, this is something that it's not a, a dress-up party. It's just a fellowship and get together with other Christians for something to do. Um, because we don't want to be associated in any way with, with Halloween and celebrating Halloween. It's the, I don't think it's right. I don't think we should be yoked up together with, with that worldly um, holiday. And, and it's not even just a worldly, but it's a satanic holiday. It's a wicked one. It's, it's evident in the way that people decorate for it. It's, it's, it's obvious. Um, but we offer that and we will offer that every year we're a church to, to give people a place to go, something to do. So that way, even if you're tempted, if someone asks you, hey man, what are you doing on Friday? Come on out. You know, like, we're having this Halloween party. Uh, I'm going I, I to be at church. I've got, I've got something else going on that day. So you could always count on that. And um, even if the church doesn't have something, you can count on, on we'll be here for you. So um, anyways, uh, hopefully you're able to, to see some of the truth behind that. And that, you know, we, it's sometimes, it can be difficult to counteract what the, what the culture is doing to us. You know, we get, we get brainwashed, we get, we get into thinking that all of this stuff is just okay. And people might look at you as you're weird and say, what do you mean? Like, what are you, a Jehovah's Witness? You know, because they don't celebrate anything, like no Christmas, no birthdays, anything like that. And it's like, no, we're not, I mean, we don't take that approach. It's just, it's just this is a one, this is a wicked holiday. And I don't care what it is. I don't care. You call it whatever you want. But I mean, if someone were to start up a new holiday next month or next year or you know, in six months from now, or whatever, and just say, hey, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be setting up this idol and we're going to be setting, you know, doing a sacrifice and stuff. Look, we wouldn't do that. You'd be like, that's wicked. That's wrong. Anything. I mean, if anything that goes against the Bible, but saying to do this stuff, we're not going to participate in it. And this is no different. Just because you might have grown up with it doesn't make it okay. But let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for the Bible and your truth. God, um, help us to, to, to love wisdom, not to love death, dear God, and to, and to hate wisdom, but to, to love wisdom, to want to know more, to want to do what's right in your eyes. Lord, um, oftentimes people might think that, oh man, you got all these rules and, and we can't have any fun. And, and it's just not true. There's, there's so much fun to be had and it's actually more fun to be doing righteous things and having fellowship amongst, amongst the brethren, dear Lord, and, and doing wholesome activities where there's, there's lots of fun things to do. Help us not to have this mindset or this attitude that the only things that are fun to do are things that are ungodly and things that, that go against what, what you tell us that we should be doing, dear Lord. Um, help us, if maybe we've been ingrained in that, in that type of a life and that those things are fun because we've been doing them for so long. God, help us to, to, to change that about ourselves, that we could do that which is right and pleasing in your eyes, dear Lord, and then we can experience the true joy and peace and the things that, that we'll receive from walking in the Spirit, those fruits of the Spirit, dear God, to love, joy, peace, faith, charity, all, all the things that, that are the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, we'll experience those things and, and really understand what true joy and true happiness is as we're obeying your commands, dear Lord, and, and start to realize how, um, how much those other things really aren't that much fun. And um, God, I pray that you would please just stir up our spirits and help us to, to have the mind to want to do what's right and um, in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.